Okay, now now we can use a trigonometric identity here uh, that uh, sine of theta is equal to 2 sine theta over 2 times cosine theta over 2. And when we plug that in right there for sine of theta, okay, what we're going to end up with, <coughs> excuse me, is that the final expression for the differential cross section is equal to little z big z e squared over 16 pi uh, epsilon naught k naught squared times 1 over sine of the fourth of theta over 2. Okay. Okay, so basically with this expression now, all the physics is done. So this expression tells you how, um, allows you to predict the number of particles uh, in a, from a beam with a particular intensity that will be scattered into particular uh, solid angles. So uh, in particular, uh, I, the beam intensity, times d sigma d omega um, times the differential solid angle, We'll tell this is the number of particles per unit time scattered into um, the, the solid angle d omega. So d omega is defined. Uh, uh, by the angle theta by the scattering geometry here okay so theta d omega is defined by theta so basically it'll tell you by varying theta that and you can basically on your detector you can sum up the number of particle counts in um, in this differential solid angle um, now we can basically uh, obtain for this allows you to obtain a prediction for that so you see it goes as one over sine to the fourth of theta over two. Okay, that's the important thing. So, for a beam with an initial with where the particles have a particular kinetic energy, initial kinetic energy K naught, and for um, particular particles uh, uh, in the, both beam and the target, then um, basically the prediction is is given by this. And you can compare that with the measurements. And this is exactly what Rutherford did in order to um, Establish that all the positive charge and most of the mass of gold atoms uh, was concentrated in a tiny region, um, supposedly at the center of, uh, at the very center of the atoms. Okay, so this is this is how he um, established that from looking at his data. Basically, this this uh, uh, prediction matched the uh, the data, and since this prediction basically relies on the fact that we, if you remember many slides ago at the very beginning of this lecture, we talked about the assumptions um, for this model and basically that the alpha particles and nuclei are considered point-like. Okay, So this, this model is not um, does uh, does not uh, is not compatible. Prediction is not compatible with the um, uh, with the uh, plum pudding model. Okay, and so um, in the end, this um, I wouldn't say simple, but reasonably straightforward calculation is what um, Rutherford used to basically prove the existence of a nucleus.